Also, we are going to talk here at the Travelers Championship about why we're playing golf, why they put on this tournament, the hundreds of charities, and the main beneficiary, the ALS Center at the Hospital for Special Care. It's a very important reason. They're doing wonderful research, and we're going to find out more about it when we come back in a couple of minutes. Year, the Travelers Championship benefits a broad range of local charities and organizations. And this year, the primary beneficiary of the event is the ALS Clinic at the Hospital for Special Care in New Britain. Dave Lambert is joining us once again live from Cromwell, talking to a doctor from the hospital. Good morning. Yes, good morning. We have Dr. Kevin Felice. He is the director of the Neuromuscular and ALS Clinic there at the Hospital for Special Care. The primary beneficiary out of all the many, many beneficiaries uh, of this tournament each year. And it's a pleasure to meet you, doctor. It's great work that you folks are doing there in New Britain. Um, but it, it may be a little tough for sort of people to, to wrap their head around. Now, I'm guessing they've heard of ALS. You said something very interestingly to me before. We also know it as Lou Gehrig's disease, but a lot of younger people don't remember necessarily who Le Lou Gehrig is. I think even fewer of them know what ALS is. How can you sort of wrap it up for us to, to tell us in, in layman's terms what happens? ALS is a degenerative disease of the nervous system that causes nerve damage and weakness of skeletal muscles and it, it leads to death within a few years because of respiratory failure. Yeah. It's a terrible disease and, and uh, uh, many clinics and, and, and researchers in the United States and all over the world are trying to figure out the cause and until we figure out the cause, trying to help patients in their day-to-day -day activities as much as we can. It's a two-pronged fight. Absolutely. And you guys are working on both prongs. We're working on both prongs. Of, uh, yeah. Tell us about the work that you're doing. Our clinic is the largest ALS clinic in Connecticut, one of the largest in the Northeast. Every year we care for about 250 patients with ALS. There are approximately 300 in Connecticut at any one time, so we have a major impact. We run a multidisciplinary clinic. Patients come in every two to four months, and they spend almost a whole morning with us uh, getting all their care needs. Uh, that way they, it's like one-stop shopping for them. We also run a clinical trials unit where we test new medications in the hope of finding a medication that will slow the progression of the disease and uh, ultimately leading to a cure for the disease. Uh, there are some medications though that are, I, I don't know if proven is the right word, but uh, they help. There is one medication that's FDA approved for, med uh, for ALS, but uh, it only promotes survival by a few months. We're really looking for something much, much better than that, and yeah. we strive to do that in the clinic. So, um, and it, it just must be uh, rewarding, but also very frustrating. Because I mean, do you know when you're getting closer uh, to making a breakthrough? Does it just sort of happen like a eureka lightning bolt? I don't, Tim. It's it's hard to say. I, I you know, it's like a thousand-piece puzzle and. Over the last 25 years that I've been doing this, many pieces of the puzzle have been put together, and we're just waiting for someone to co co uh, connect them all. Yeah, and there were some some breakthroughs. At least they found a gene uh, uh, up in, uh, like you said, it was a multinational study, partly out of UMass, just recently. It made big news. Uh, what did that mean for for ALS research? Well, although. Genetic forms of ALS are not as common as the typical or sporadic ALS. It still provides us with very important information about the science of ALS. We can develop an animal model that carries this gene mutation and test new medications on, the, on these animal models. So it's a very, very important discovery. Uh, lastly, and certainly not least, what does it mean for that the ALS Center uh, is the primary beneficiary of such a wonderful tournament? It's incredible to us. We've been doing our work for many years, kind of under the radar, and, and to, 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 to be the primary beneficiary this year is, is uh, it, it raises awareness for ALS. It uh, raises awareness of how our patients are, you know, are suffering with this disease, how their families are suffering, and we couldn't be more excited to be part of it. I imagine this is hopefully going to be a golden time in the fight against ALS. The Ice Bucket Challenge did so much to raise awareness. The money is actually seeing some results, and hopefully something uh, will come from being the primary beneficiary at the ALS Center. Uh, we're going to talk with you 
a lot more over the uh, the coming days and uh, mornings, and we're going to talk to some other people who have been affected by ALS as well. So a pleasure to finally meet you, Dr. Felice. Thank you, Thank you for coming on. Again, we will have a lot more with you as we r roll on here. This is Pro-Am Day today at TPC River Highlands. Don't forget the first and second rounds will be here for those two on Thursday and Friday. But for now, let's send it back to you guys in the studio in Hartford.